In the first reading today, St. Peter exhorts the priests among them that they are to be becoming from the heart a pattern for the flock. In other words, one can stand up here and preach and even sound rather eloquent doing it. But if we don't live what it is that we're preaching, we show ourselves to be hypocrites. Now on one hand, obviously, we have to preach the fullness of the truth, which isn't to try and say that we're living the fullness of truth, but it's to be able to at least strive to live what it is that we're preaching. Because otherwise, we have lots of selfish reasons. St. Peter gives us several, several of those. And again, it may not be, obviously, you're not priests, but you can look at it as being parents and so on. And what's the disposition that you have? If, you're, if you have a position of authority at work, you know, with regard to your employees, whatever it may be. And so St. Paul is, is, or St. Peter rather, is telling us that we need to tend the flock, governing not under constraint. In other words, not for power. A person in authority is given authority, not power. Authority is to serve. Power is self-serving. So if we want to lord it over people, yeah, that's power. That's the wrong attitude. But authority is so that we can serve. He goes on to say, not for base gain. Once again, not for what we can get out of it. Whatever that may be, whether that is the money or whether that is the feeling of power or whether, whatever it may be, whatever the reason for somebody doing whatever they're doing, we have to look at that and ask ourselves, am I doing this for a selfish reason? Because if I am, that's the wrong reason. And that's the part that needs to be able to be worked out. In fact, we even saw it right in the introit at Mass. You know, Simon Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep, feed my lambs. If you love Jesus, then you take care of his people. But it has to be that love for our blessed Lord. There certainly can be an obvious love for the people, and there needs to be. But if that doesn't flow from a love for our Lord, then it's something that's just on the natural level then we're not seeking, as St. Peter talks about, to be from the heart and to be that example and to be striving for the glory that's to be revealed because it's to be liked. It's to be appreciated. It's the wrong reason. Those of you who are parents know, if you've had teenage kids, you've heard it, you are the worst parent that's ever lived. I hate you, I can't stand you. Did you turn around and say, oh, please, no, 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 I need to be your friend? No, you had to tell them what the truth was even when they didn't want to hear it. You had to say, no, you can't do that even when they wanted to do it, whatever it might be. Because you love them. That's the only reason. You didn't do this because you hate your kids. You don't do this because whatever other selfish reason I can show how much power I have because I can do this. It's not why you do it. It's because you love them. And that's what St. Peter is asking. But for us, that love is on a higher level even. If we go back to the gospel and that question is asked, who do people say that I am? If we can say with St. Peter, you are the Christ, the son of the living God, Therein lies our reason for everything that we do. Our faith in Jesus Christ and consequently our love for him. And flowing from that love for our Lord needs to be a love for the people entrusted to our care, whatever state in life that might be. And so again, we recognize what it means. It's selfless. It's following his example. There's not one single thing in his entire life that he did selfishly. Everything was done 
out of obedience to his heavenly Father, for love of God, and for love of us. Everything. And that's the example that we're supposed to be following. Even if that means that we're going to have to be sacrificed. Because that's what he did. And so again, we look at that and say, am I willing to love in that way? Am I willing to sacrifice myself for the good of these people entrusted to my care? That's what St. Peter is asking all of the priests to do. And now you can really stop and look at it and ask yourself, how many priests do you know who can do that? Yeah, you probably don't even need all the fingers on one hand, do you? But then ask yourself, how many married people do you know who can do that? Same problem. Because of our selfishness, that's where the problem comes in. So we have to keep striving for that charity, that love for God and love for neighbor. And we have to continually learn to say no to the self so that we can say yes to the Lord, because that's what he's asking of us. Again, it doesn't matter what our state in life is. The principles remain the same. St. Peter in this point is, is talking to the priests, but the same remains for everyone, because those are the two greatest commandments given to everyone who believes in the Lord. And so if we're going to be able to say, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, then he's going to say, all right, what follows from that? It's not just an objective statement. It now has to become subjective. You are my Lord and my God, and I am going to serve you, and I am going to love you. And if you're going to ask me to lay down my life and to feed your sheep, then that's what I need to do. Because I love you and because I love those people, that's what our motive ought to be. Anything less than that is the selfishness. So we can do lots of good things, but for the wrong reason. We want to do the right thing for the right reason. And the right reason is love of God and love of neighbor.